This is the last day of our vacation. And do you find this when you go someplace new, whether you stay at an Airbnb or a hotel, that you're just kind of off balance, especially when you first get there and you're like, where is everything? How do I get to the grocery store? How do I get to the pool? And you have to really think about what you're doing. Right. I feel like that's what this season leading up to Easter is or can be as yeah. well. It can be a time where we get out of our normal routine mm -hmm. and intentionally incorporate one or two different things into our life so that we can be more thoughtful and get off of autopilot. Our faith tradition growing up actually did a great job, I feel like, leading us through Lent, the significance of it, having events planned throughout that time leading yep. up to Easter. But then things have kind of changed over time, and I do. I find myself, or our kids are different ages now. Totally. And like, what does this look like, and what do we do? I would like to walk with you through this time. <laughs> Here is your free Easter guide and planner. Mm -hmm. And basically, we'll talk about all of the different ways that we can prepare ourselves or observe mm -hmm. Lent to this 40 day season, 40 day period leading up to Easter, that it, it actually has nothing to do with any specific denomination. In fact, yeah. Jesus didn't explicitly say, do this, mm -hmm. but we can gather some things and also some traditions that have taken place over time that just have the sole purpose of helping us to prepare ourselves. Moving all of the forks and spoons and knives from where you think they should be yeah. <laughs> in the rental to across the kitchen. So like, again, you have to think about what you're doing or you just have more room to prepare your heart. We want to do something intentional because in many ways, Easter feels more significant than Christmas. I, right? what I love about Easter is Christmas has so many cultural things wrapped mm -hmm. up into it. Easter though, typically there isn't as much of those gatherings and gifts mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So we actually can, focus a lot more on. I'm just putting yeah. the final touches on our Easter guide. And you know when you pick up your phone to mindlessly scroll on YouTube or Instagram and Facebook? I've always felt good about the content we provide because at least if everybody's already there anyway, we're providing some good teaching and encouragement. But what if there was a place where you didn't have to sort through any of the other stuff or get lost in those holes or feel bad about yourself after scrolling Instagram and Facebook? And you just got encouragement from like-minded women. I wanna invite you to join my private community now on the Volley app. When I found out about this app, I knew it was time to start this group because it keeps you separate from all of those other social media platforms where we can just focus on Bible study, prayer, and faithful living. Every Saturday morning, we're gonna go live for a guided prayer or Bible study session. And then in between, we'll use videos and chats to encourage, and strengthen one another. So Easter might be the perfect time for you to invest a little bit more in your faith and to grow in your spirituality, and I would love for you to join us. There is a small fee that's designed to help keep this group a little bit smaller and super intentional, but I would love to have you, so find all of the details in the link below. So what can we find in the So, you, this is a free download. I printed mine at Staples. <laughs> it's so pretty, right? It's okay. really pretty, yeah. <laughs> so if, in the very beginning, it just talks about what is Lent. It explains this 40-day season leading up to Easter, and then this was one of my favorite ideas of kind of creating your space or decorating mm -hmm. for Lent. Uh, notice these nice palm branches <laughs> behind us. So one way a lot of people will decorate like with purple or things like that. I love using like stones and succulents and mm -hmm. almost a little bit deserty, but like green um preparation -y. not we don't want to get out the lilies yet right like okay. this is a season <laughs> like lent is a little bit of a somber season yeah. it's meant to be a little bit introspective in terms of like okay lord what would you like to do in my life during this time how would mm -hmm. you like me to receive the reality of your resurrection anew this year and mm -hmm. so using things like succulents i think is a beautiful way to kind of prepare your space and again you're telling yourself like okay, something's different here. Yeah. Like this is a different time of year. This is a different mindset that we're going into. And then there's three like basic common practices um, that people for generations and generations have been doing during Lent. And that's prayer, fasting, and giving or generosity or acts of service. And so we just kind of like walk through, if you're, if you're thinking this year, wow, I really want to incorporate prayer into my life. So we have some tips for you or some ways to do that or fasting. And actually next week we're going to talk about, uh, are we supposed to fast? What, what does that look like to fast? I think it's one of the greatest ways to draw closer to the Lord, Agreed. especially yeah. in a culture where many of us have 
more than enough all the time. Right. And uh, you know, giving or acts of service. And one of my favorite tips in here is putting a jar of like beans or something like that on the counter. And then every time someone in the family does an act of service for someone in your family or someone else, you take one of those beans and put it in an empty jar. And then on Easter morning, that jar full of beans turns into jelly beans and you kind of celebrate. Yeah, that's super fun. And I think even as I talk about jelly beans, I think what's always tricky if it's Christmas or if it's Easter, you know, we have this tension of like, okay, I don't want this to be all about like the Easter bunny and peeps. Mm -hmm or Cadbury eggs, <laughs> right? Yeah. But I think it's okay. Again, most of this wasn't dictated to us by mm -hmm. Jesus in the Bible. Like we have traditions, again, that are meant to help lead us through this season. So that jar of lima beans, that's just kind of like gray and white in color, that doesn't mean a lot during the time of preparation, but then turns into jelly beans. Yeah. It is a beautiful picture of then the celebration and what we get to experience on Easter morning. You know, you might do the empty tomb rolls or... Yep our uh, bud cake last have a year cake, yeah. <laughs> you know and at first I was actually never one to really do those types of things with the kids I'm like it's kind of silly it doesn't really matter but now I'm realizing like oh but it was the perfect opportunity to talk with them about this yeah. while we were doing something tactile and kind of fun yeah too I think if you didn't grow up with that as part of your tradition mm -hmm. it can seem a little almost over spiritual or church like really sure. churchy sure. like yeah. you know a resurrection eggs yeah. are a really common one yeah. however as the kids get older and you're like oh wait, I need like every opportunity I can yeah. to work in an object lesson here and help us all enter into that. So at the back of the guide, we actually have uh, resurrection roll um, recipes, our bunk cake recipe, DIY, make your own resurrection eggs. Everything's resurrection if you know. <laughs> and of course. And so we can't call me sir, they're, they're resurrection. Yeah. Also, we have a Spotify playlist on here is another great way to be setting the tone in your home. I actually made a playlist for our vacation. Yeah. You know, just because then I feel like it's fun to play it on vacation. Then when you go back home, it kind of like brings you back to it's that like vacation. It's like the same thing. Vibe. Yeah. 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 So we've been doing a lot of um, Kane the band. Have oh, your yeah, kids discover fun. them. Yeah. Super fun. So, and then again, we walk through prayer. So the way this guide can be used is pick out one or two things. Mm -hmm. Like what's sure. going to be my thing this year? Is it mm -hmm. fasting? Is it prayer? And I have, I love these prayer prompts in here for you. So you could even like take these two pages and hang them on the fridge. Yeah. And then like every morning, maybe during breakfast, you know, just take one of them and you're gonna say, Lord, I thank you for. And then it has some points like my health, my family, my work, my church. I get to worship freely or my salvation. And what you find, once you start speaking out some of those things, mm -hmm. it kind of gets the ball rolling. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, thank you for my job. Thank you for yeah. my kids. Thank you for, and it just kind of keeps going from there. And also a Bible reading plan for you where you can cross off the dates and then each week ends with a devotional. And so I felt like, you know, one short passage from John every day and then a devotional at the end of the week is probably realistically what most of us can keep up with. Or if you have another Bible reading plan, you could even just do the devotionals at the end of the week um, just to kind of stay in that tone of preparing for Easter. Yeah. And then at the end, we have just some planning pages for you. So if your church, you know, does have a good Friday service or something that you want to observe or like your family plans, um, getting those on the calendar. So because I mean, I think we know how fast 40 days can yeah. we fly. Yeah. I mean, how fast did our vacation just go? I know. Like, just one second. <laughs> like, did we just get here? And so did you see how that sun is just like, I am not complaining. I am not either. complaining. I am sweating, but I am not complaining. And so planning pages for you again, like what I love about this is just print out what's helpful. Mm -hmm. And then these are some favorite Easter devotionals for you and your family. So there's some for the kids and some for grownups. That's very so cool. a devotional is another great way to enter into the Easter season. And then Again, here at the end is where we have like some of those recipes for like resurrection, resurrection rolls cool. and, and some of those things like that. So get your free download at the link below. It has also been emailed out if you got it last year or if you got our Christmas planner, then just go ahead and check your, your inbox. It also could be in your spam or your promotions tab. So just slide that email over into your primary to make sure that you get all of these helpful resources and communications. And then also, if you're not following me on like Facebook or Instagram, if you use those um, platforms, mm -hmm. I am on there most days yeah. offering just encouragement. I, uh, well, 
you know, right now I was talking about winning our volleyball game. <laughs> That's kind of the encouragement that I was getting. But as soon as we get home, we're going to be switching into Easter mode and I will yeah. be definitely be there with you having fun. And so this is kind of interesting, just switching gears a little bit on vacation. I am normally the competitive one. Mm -hmm. And we, you guys brought a volleyball. There's a great sand volleyball court here. And you're like, we have this fun game that we learned on our missions trip where instead of like hitting the ball, you actually just throw it back and forth, which is great for little kids. Yeah. So you just can't let it touch the ground. Yeah. Which is, it's so fun. So you're telling me about it. So this morning we're like texting. We're like, okay, 9.30 a.m. <laughs> it's on. And I got there and you and the kids were, I joined one of your kids' teams and you and Tom were on one side, and I couldn't believe that Dawn was like intentionally throwing the ball over her kids' heads, spiking it into the corner of the court, and like almost laughing, and I was just like, okay, there's like three of us on this side. <laughs> All right, I'm like, this isn't even fair or fun at this point, but Dawn is just like, ha ha, five points, us. And I, like, I, I honestly don't know if I have seen this side of you before. I know, Adeline was like, Mom, I don't usually think of you and Daddy as competitive, but you and Princeton were, like, talking smack at dinner last night, and we just know, like, you guys are very competitive, and so I felt like we just had to bring our A game, and you, you brought it out in us, I feel like. I, so. I didn't even, I just thought I just walked over to the volleyball court, <laughs> and, like, and Princeton is, and he loves volleyball, and yeah. so it did, there were a few moments where I was just like, oh, come on, and, yeah. like, and, and it was close, it's not, yeah. and I think, honestly, you guys have been playing a little longer, I think we came oh, in with that's fresh legs. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> no, like, it you, was it was actually a pretty tight game. It took a little bit to get into it, once we were in the yeah. group, it was super fun. And Tom's tall too so I mean even I felt good about that that Princeton and I were both pretty short and we could defend the court pretty, pretty well. well yeah so unfortunately we don't get to have another like rematch until like, I know what June our next vacation? <laughs> I don't even I know. know which is probably okay because also we were playing rummy cube if you're familiar with that game and uh, you guys actually got a little competitive over there too so yeah so should we tell the score of that one I don't even know the score we mopped up with you all well, see I always okay here's what I do if I'm not confident that I can win a game, I make sure that I have an excuse. So for Rummy Cube, well, so for volleyball, it's that we're very short. <laughs> for Rummy Cube, Cube, it was that it was Princeton's first time playing, oh. and I was actually helping him learn. And so we had a little bit of a handicap because of that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So then, you know. And then like, Diana had to go put the kids to bed. Yeah. So I remember when Dawn's oldest was like five years old, she's like, Diana, you got to talk to her. She is so competitive. Like, give her some advice and help her manage this. And I was like, Adeline, don't play games you can't win. Yeah. <laughs> Practice ahead of time. Get the game. Like, if you know that game's coming on the trip, get it ahead of yeah. time. And then if you don't think you have a chance, you're sick. <laughs> Your leg is hurting. You know, like, you just yeah. get out well, of you there. Know, I was thinking because I've been reading um, Bob Goff's book, Love Does. Okay. And he... His big thing is about like how do we show love and action, you know, and how do we get outside of our comfort zones to do it. And he was like, you know, as Christians, most of us have just kind of we've been living really boring lives, <laughs> right? And so I see about that. It was like it was kind of that point in the trip where it's like well, we don't just want to like sit by the pool or go on another hike. Like yeah. we needed something to like bring in a little, yep. a little spice. And so I think all of us need that from time to time. Was Whether that the volleyball game or the rummy cube? I think both? it was both. Oh, but so you were intentionally being spicy I, just, just to like a little, keep everybody keep like everyone feeling alive and vibrant yeah. and active. But. Well, and it was funny because we came down a few days ahead of you guys, mm -hmm. almost a week because Princeton was able to work from home and I was like, if the kids are coming, I want to get them like settled, settled in. Yeah. And we had access to this beautiful town home. And so, um, so we were kind of like, how long is Diana going to last without yeah. people? I'm like a week. Cause we didn't, even, people? we didn't even have a vehicle. <laughs> My mom and dad drove our van down then, yeah. which was awesome. And so like, we were just kind of like here with no vehicle or anything like that. And, uh, I think the one day I talked to you for almost like an hour yeah. on the phone and I'm like, I'm doing great. What are you yeah. talking about? I don't feel isolated. Like, and you're like, 
We've been I can't on the phone do for this every day. <laughs> <laughs> but it was amazing how like once you guys got here, it just got so much more fun and yeah. it started to feel like vacation. Sure. Before it felt like work from home, but then when you got here, it's like now it feels like vacation. I'm See, so we grateful. We brought the spice. It was good. Yeah. So thanks for like. <laughs> now I know what you were doing. I didn't know what was welcome. happening. Yeah. I like Adeline and I are like. We have never seen this side of Tom before. <laughs> but that's good. Bob Goff also says every day you have a chance to be the, a new you. A new you. Yeah. And so that's kind of funny that you woke up and you're like, I'm a competitive you today. Yes, I'm that's gonna, me today. You know what? I'm a surprise. I'm a volleyball today. champion today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like there it. There you go. All right. Well, thanks for joining us in our uh, beautiful Florida, Florida vacation. We will be journeying together, even if all you can do is tune, tune into these videos as oh, we yeah. prepare for Easter. Mm -hmm. Like, you know where you're at. You know where your capacity is at right now. Maybe it's just one tiny little small thing. Maybe, you know what, you're like, I downloaded the planner. Like, yep. I want credit for that. Like, we totally understand. Um, but we'll be walking through this season together. And again, if you're on Instagram or Facebook, uh, follow me over there too for daily uh, volleyball updates yep. and encouragement. So Father, we just thank you for this time, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your death, your burial, and your resurrection, Lord God. And that Jesus, in you, we have fullness of life. Lord, that you paid for all brokenness in our lives and that we have eternity with you. So Father, I pray that you would prepare our hearts and help us to receive this reality anew this season. And so I just bless each one of us now in Jesus' name, amen. I found a semi-quiet little corner here. Oh, sorry, Cora. <laughs> sorry, Cora, Cora's napping. <laughs> Everyone's in the water. Uh, my mom and dad went on a picnic at a state park and along with Don and Tom and the kids. So we're all just kind of enjoying this beautiful weather. You're not guaranteed beautiful 70 and 80 degree weather in Florida. So we are so grateful. We're also so grateful for the extra hands and having Nana and Grandpa here and Don and Tom and the kids. Um, and just settling in, relaxing, and soaking up the sun. So, so grateful again for this time away, and uh, that little coral can nap anywhere. <laughs>